Oh my God, it's so cold. Welcome back, and if it's your first time here, just welcome. Today, I'm at a waterfall, and I'm gonna show you just how a professional photographer goes about taking a scene like this. Because if you're an amateur, what you would tend to do is come along, find this beautiful waterfall, think, oh my God, this is amazing, I love it. Stand in the most obvious place you can, take a shot, and then you're on your way. When you get back home, it makes it look, well, Take a look for yourself. This is a shot I did of this waterfall just as anybody else would take it. And as you can see, it's a little bit bland. So the first thing that a professional would do if they came here is scout around. So I'm just gonna have a look around and see if I can get a really nice composition of the fall coming down. So what gear have I got today? I've got my standard gear that I always bring on these videos. It's a standard DSLR standard kit lens and this is the 24 to 85 millimeter on a nikon d800 i do have some other bits and pieces though that we're gonna that i'll show you i've got a 10 stop neutral density filter and this is the hoyer pro nd 1000 and this is the best priced 10 stop nd filter that i've found so why spend 200 dollars when you can buy one of these for 50 60 70 dollars the other thing you're going to need is a tripod now this because of the location i'm at is my oldest most trusted tripod this thing has been battered but it's still going strong this is a manfrotto 055 with a manfrotto three-way head on it and it's just beautiful for this sort of thing it's rugged it's sturdy now what a lot of people would do is just set the tripod up where they think the location looks nice sit the camera on top and then they're good to go but consider doing this I'm just gonna put that down what we need to do is move around the waterfall looking for the best composition and then that's when I'm gonna make a mental note of where the camera actually is positioned and then put the tripod there and that's how you use a tripod properly don't just set the three legs up in exactly the, the same standard way that you see people doing in a field because when you're at a location like this where the ground's completely uneven, you want to make sure the tripod gets the camera in the best location, not the camera in the tripod's best location. Okay, so I've scouted around and I found a few uh, different compositions and this one's quite a nice one because it gets me right up close to the waterfall and that because of the low light today we're in the shadow we're looking straight into the sun that way so this whole area is basically in shadow if the sun would come out which it does from time to time so the exposure down here with iso 100 is going to be quite low anyway so the water is always going to have a bit of movement how much of that movement depends on what aperture i set so I'm going to set an aperture of f10, which, will give, which is really nice and sharp for this lens. I'm going to set this to 24 millimeters, so it's the widest it can go. And then I'm going to frame it up. Now you'll notice that the tripod on this, on this terrain is very difficult to get level, which is why I use this three-way head, because I can go vertical, I can move up and down that way so I can move the camera it's a bit like having a ball head really but it's a bit sturdier I find um, so I'm just going to frame this shot up and then I'll take a couple of images making sure I don't slip over so we'll have the the top of the waterfall coming down from the edge of the image make sure I level that up so the camera is now level even though the tripod isn't and I'm getting one second exposure so I'll just do a test on that to make sure that that's correct because we're dealing with a lot of dark 
and a lot of light so it won't necessarily be the correct exposure that the camera's telling me. Although that's not too bad, although I'm going to drop it down just a, a smidge. So I'm just going to use exposure compensation to drop that down about 0.7 of a stop. What I don't want is for any movement to come into this shot. So I'm also going to select mirror up because what that will do, when the mirror flips up, it can move the camera. I'm also not going to touch the tripod or touch the camera to make the exposure because all of that can add to a little bit of movement. We've got the focus set, we've got the exposure set. All I'm going to do now is use my remote trigger to put the mirror up, give it a, a second or two, and then I'll take the exposure. And you'll see that I've got some really nice movement in that water. All the greens are quite vibrant and if I zoom in you'll see the rocks are absolutely pin sharp. So what we're going to move on to now is the neutral density filter. Now this is a 10 stop neutral density filter and what that means is that whatever the exposure is when you put this filter on you lose 10 stops of light. So you're going to have to use either a much bigger aperture or put loads and loads of ISO in or the actual thing that it's designed for make sure the shutter speed stays open for a lot longer because it's quite dark in here and I like shooting my landscapes on ISO 100 this exposure is going to be minutes not seconds so on a bright day you'd probably get about 30 seconds out of this on a medium-ish aperture today I reckon it's gonna be between two and three minutes when it comes to using cameras for that long that's where one of these comes in really really handy because most cameras have shutter speeds that you can set up to 30 seconds if you've got to go over that there's a system called bulb now that reverts back to the old days where they used to have this rubber bladder that was full of air that you would depress and hold and that would depress the shutter these days we can do it electronically but the terminology stayed. So I've gotten myself a nice composition. As you can see, the tripod is now in the water, which is why the aluminium uh, body of it is really good, the aluminium legs. I've also got, at the bottom of the frame, this rock, which is being hit by the water, and the water coming down behind. When this is a, a two minute, two and a half minute exposure, all of that, will be, all the water moving, will be recorded as a blur, one thing you do need to do when doing really long exposures like this is to make sure your battery is charged because this sort of thing eats battery power. So I'm shooting this at f11 for half a second. So I've then got to add 10 stops of exposure to that. However, Hoyer has made the process easy and the clue is in the name. To get a rough estimate of exposure, you multiply the given exposure by 1,000. So 0.25 seconds multiplied by 1,000 is 250 seconds. Divide that by 60, and that gives about four minutes. So my focus is set. I roughly know what my exposure is gonna be. I've got my aperture set. Everything's locked down. My focus is on manual, so that's not gonna hunt. So everything is now set for putting the neutral density filter on. What I do first is there's a curtain at the back here, because if you've got an exposure of one minute, two minutes, three minutes, you get light leakage coming into the back of the eyepiece. Now some cameras don't have that, so you're gonna to have to try and cover it up with something else. Otherwise you see this light spot in the middle of your frame or the top of the frame where you see a line down the middle of it just where the lights leaked in. So in bold mode, you have to keep your finger on the shutter. So as I press the shutter, I hit the timer. And all the while, you see a little red light with the exposure being made. So we're just coming up to the end of the exposure. And release. Now what you're gonna see, I don't know what this does on other cameras, but on the Nikons, you have this job NR come up and that flashes while the processors in the camera are assessing the file. Because it's had such a long exposure, it needs to work on it. The NR stands for noise reduction. 
So you need to make sure that your camera has long exposure noise reduction set uh, as on just so the camera can work through all the extra noise that's been built up and it, uh, it works out so you get a proper exposure. Now that can take as long as the exposure did. So you're going to be sitting there for a while and you might think, oh my god, something's wrong with my camera. Quick panic, panic, panic. It's not, you just have to leave it doing it. But this is why long exposure photography takes so long. The setting up takes a long time. It takes a lot of consideration. The exposure takes a long time. And then the camera has to do its work as well. And that takes a long time. So patience is a absolute virtue when it comes to long exposure photography. So something fun you can do when you're doing these long exposures of waterfalls and stuff, with modern technology of course, you can do stacked images. So what I'm going to try and do, which will drive the internet people crazy, is put myself in a really long exposure shot. Now obviously I can't stand still for two, three, four minutes for the exposure. But what I can do is make the exposure, leave everything set up the way it is, take the neutral density filter off, stick myself in the frame, make sure the exposure is right for when I'm in the shot, which will be roughly a second, or I can even make it even less than that by opening up the aperture. And then in post, put myself in the long exposure shot. So that's what I'm gonna do. So everything's set up with that shot. The camera's still in the same position. I can get myself in the frame because I know exactly where to stand. I've got my shutter release, so I can just position myself where I want to be, take a bunch of shots, choose the best one, and in post, stitch it into the actual image. So, please stick around to the end of the video to see the shots that I've got from today. But that's pretty much how I tackle a, uh, a scene like this. Use the landscape get the camera into the best possible composition that you can, and then utilize all your equipment to get the best possible creative image out of it. So you get your tripod in the best position, you use your filters that you have, you use the light that you have, and basically work the composition as much as possible. I also, when it comes to waterfalls, I tend to use either a polarizing filter, if it's dark enough, i have probably just used one today, but I just wanted to show you that Hoya Pro ND 1000 neutral density filter just to show you just that there's no color cast. It's a really well priced bit of kit and they make it in various sizes to screw in so you don't get any light leakage. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell just so you're notified when my next videos are coming out. I've got a lot more content to share this year. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.